All right, let's go to the new evidence now that the Obama administration knew more than they were telling us about the Obamacare rollout problems. The House Energy and Commerce Committee uncovering some documents that they revealed that have some startling information about the online small business exchange troubles. It's known as SHOP. Committee member, Congressman Adam Kinzinger joins me now. Uh, Congressman, welcome. Good to have you here tonight. Hey, thanks. Good to be here. You know, you it's just have to, you got to scratch your head, uh, you know, because <laughs> if, if you're rolling something out and you want it to be a big success and you know you've got a problem, I mean, any business would say, look, get a how to ahead of it. Just just come clean, say it's not ready, it's going to be ready soon, but it just no. boggles the mind. That's not what happened here. And you guys learned some interesting things about this particular program. Yeah, well, <clears throat> well we learned that the administration actually knew in August that this was not going to work. It was going to have to be delayed. And then they announced it kind of just before the whole government shutdown time period and then announced later around Thanksgiving that this is going to have to be delayed a year. But you think about it, where does this come from? So in August, there was all this talk of we need to delay the health care bill, and many of us Republicans in Congress, all of us, voted to delay the health care bill. But he didn't want the bad press that would come out of the idea that it's not going to be perfect by the time it's supposed to be implemented. So they withheld that information, in my mind, until just before the government shutdown because they knew that the shutdown would be the story and not necessarily the delay. So this is what we've seen by the administration. And I know the American people, they just want to be told the truth. You know, tell, if this isn't working, tell us how you're going to fix it. Tell us why. Uh, but instead, what we find out is the administration hid this for a couple of months. Yeah, and, the, the you great know, irony. Couldn't even find and, out and more. You know, you're right to go back and, and think about what was happening during that time period. But it, it's interesting. And the president at that time was saying, you know, these Republicans, they don't want you to get health care coverage. They're, you know, well, mean, right. basically. They, they said, you know, they want it to be delayed, <laughs> but we want you to get the health care coverage that you need. If you're not covered, you should be covered, and that's what we want. So ironically, uh, you folks were offering a delay at that point that perhaps, you know, if they'd taken it, it would have given them time to work the whole thing out a little bit better. And ironically, people who aren't who want to be covered now are not, and folks who were are also not. Yeah, I mean, you think about this. Had, had you know, the president come out and said, he knew the problems that were coming, but he didn't have to tell the American people that he knew the problems. He could have just said, look, in the spirit of bipartisanship, we need to delay this a year. And I think the American people would have said, wow, Republicans and Democrats work together. But the truth is, this has become an issue about, you know, we're going to ram this through. Eventually it's going to work out. And the hope on the administration and the Democrat side is that eventually people are going to look back and say, oh, we had some troubles, but it all worked out. But keep in mind, too, they testified to our committee that everything was on track, that the uh, website was on track, the exchanges were on track, yeah. and it's just not the case. And, and then, you know, look, again, tell the American people the truth. That's all they want to hear, and they'll, they'll take whatever news comes. There's a re another really interesting revelation that I want to get in here in the last minute that we have left, because there's emails that go back and forth, and C uh, CGI promised that it was going to be ready. This is the small business exchange part of the whole thing. Um, and they said they needed six more weeks. And a CMS official says, can we sign this in blood? <laughs> um, so they were worried. You know, they said, are you serious? Right. Are you really going to be better in six weeks? And it's so interesting that the president says, you know, nobody told me. And this is going back and forth between these two entities. Well, look, I hate to pile on, but you think about it. The president has always said nobody tells me about whatever comes out in his administration. I, I wonder if he actually even talks to anybody in administration. But, yeah, this obviously they were worried. They should have been worried, but they should have told Congress. You know, when you have a $500 million website that at the end of the day is going to be a billion dollars, I mean, there's some outrage there that the American people, we're so fast and loose with money in Washington, D.C., that a billion dollars doesn't seem like much. That's a lot. That could have made a real difference in people's lives. And, uh, look, we need answers on the committee. We're going to continue to get to the bottom of this. And, again, the American people, just tell them the truth. They're willing to hear whatever news it is, and we can you know, work together and move on from there. Interesting stuff today from your committee. Congressman, thank you very much. It was great being here. Thank you. You too. All right, so some small business owners say that Obamacare could put them out of business, they're saying, and now they're going to take their case to a judge. Griff Jenkins reports. A fresh new legal challenge to Obamacare began in federal court this week as a group of business owners and individuals from states who opted out of creating a state exchange are fighting an IRS regulation which they believe is unlawful, financially damaging, and exposes them 
to massive employer and individual obligations. David Klemensik of West Virginia is one of the plaintiffs in the case who says he would be affected. I'm a sole proprietor in a in a retail shop in a very small community, population 385, I believe it is now. And uh, there's not a, a lot of customer base to grow for expansion. There's enough to maintain. I'm happy with where I am, but there's not enough to, to grow. And it's an, it would be an added expense that would make me have to really evaluate whether to continue to do business or not. The plaintiffs argue that the plain text of the law limits subsidies to consumers in states that have created their own exchange, making it illegal for them to be offered through the federal exchange. Michael Cannon is the director of health policy studies at the Cato Institute. If the federal government establishes the exchange, those subsidies are not available, which means that those subsidies aren't there to trigger penalties against employers and those individuals. So what the Obama administration is doing is saying, no, we're going to offer those subsidies in the 34 states that have refused to establish an exchange. The law does not allow them to do that. But when they do that, if they get away with it, then those subsidies will trigger, those illegal subsidies will trigger illegal penalties against employers and individuals in those states. The government argues that the plaintiffs are misreading the law and taking a statute out of context. But that argument was not enough to stop a federal judge from allowing this suit from going forward. David, tell us why you're suing the federal government. Now, the Affordable Health Care Act is, is making a negative impact on my business. It's making it really difficult to do business um, for a small entity like me. So I'm either going to have to alter the way I do business or go on some sort of a, a, a relief program. Let's face it, the government's broke. <laughs> they just don't have the money to keep doling out and bringing more and more people in. And I don't need the product. It's I, You would be paying for my health insurance. It's something that I don't even need. And uh, yeah, I do have a philosophical problem with that. If the judge rules in favor of the plaintiffs, what does it mean for Obamacare? If those subsidies are not available in the 34 states that have said no to an exchange, what that means is that consumers in those states will see the full cost of Obamacare. And that is what the Obama administration is afraid of. That with all the problems they've had so far, if consumers see the full cost of Obamacare in their premiums, there's going to be an even greater backlash against this law, and Congress will reopen it. Interesting, right? Well, the judge says he will make a ruling on that case soon.